against Marvin Hagler from Brockton, Mass. And Gil, I'm an a very well-known, very respected in Europe, not too well-known here. What can you tell us about him? Well, I had Emil Griffith box him in 1976 in Paris. After that, I had him work with Rodrigo Valdez, also in Paris. Recently, I saw him in the gymnasium in New York. He's a good boxer. He's very fast. Makes you pay for your mistakes. He can give Hagler trouble. Fifth-rated Hamani, born in Algeria, lives in Paris, France. And Marvin Hagler didn't seem to know a whole lot about him. Well, I do know one thing. I know that he's going to be in trouble. Uh, the thing is that I, I do know that he's a boxer, um, as far as we understand. Um, but that should be no problem to me behind the fact that um, I've been working with boxers. I've been working with punches. I've been working with, uh, you know, uh, good all-around, good pros, you know. So uh, I feel as though that I fought some of the best contenders in the world. So he should fit somewhere in the category of one of them. And Gil Clancy at ringside at the Civic Center in Portland, Maine. Marvin Hagler weighed in at 161. Lucy Famani at 158 and a quarter. And Hagler brings in a record of 46 victories, two losses, two draws, including the controversial one against champion Vito Antifermo. 38 knockouts to his credit. Famani with only 21 fights, 12 knockouts. He lost his first fight and then won 20 more. And they are both 27 years of age. Marvin Hagler, born in Newark, New Jersey, now lives in Brockton, Massachusetts, as we see his record. Hamadi, born in Igufap, Algeria, not far from the legendary Marcel Serdan, who became the great French champion. And like uh, Serdan, he now resides in France, as Serdan did during most of his boxing career. He is rated number five by the WBC, Hagler number two, and number one by the WBA. The 10-point must system is in effect here in the state of Maine. Mandatory eight count in effect. The three knockdown rule is in effect, but a fighter can be saved by the bell in this state. Scoring is done by three judges. They are Louis Vigneault, Jim Breton, and Sid Swartz, all from Portland, Maine. The referee who will not score is the veteran Pete Bennett, also from Portland, Maine. Lucif Hamani will wear the blue trunks. He's on the left of your screen, and we're awaiting the bell for round one. Marvin Hagler in the red trunks, and we're underway now. This scheduled 10-round middleweight bout. Marvin Hagler hoping to get that title opportunity again. He's trying to leave the antifermo draw behind him and is willing to fight as many as necessary to get back at the championship. Hamani coming over to the United States for his first important fight here. Will... Uh, of course, uh, be facing a tremendous opportunity to make himself better known throughout North America, and a victory over Hagler would certainly vault him right to the top of the middle rank, middleweight ranks. Both these fighters, Tim, look in very, very good condition. They both look like they're just cut out of rock. Very well-conditioned fighters. And you know, Hamani has good credentials. He has 20 straight wins, but he's beaten some good Americans. He beat David Love, he beat... Rudy Robles, and of course he had a win over Emil Griffith. He has credentials. Has not been a real busy fighter, although he had three fights canceled last year that were scheduled to go. He trained for them, and for various reasons, uh, they were canceled. One of them uh, was against the veteran American Ronnie Harris, who fought for the championship. His last fight was an exhibition in September of 1979 against Jose Lozano of Spain, the fight taking place in Hamani's native Algeria. First round action. Hamani is a good boxer. He's very, very fast. Now it's a question of whether his boxing skills will be diminished because of the fact that he's in with a southpaw. That's what you have to look for. They match up very well physically. have almost identical builds. Broad-shouldered, thick-chested, heavy thighs. Both very strong and uh, really almost mirror copies of body structure. Hagler, five, nine and a half. Hamani, five, nine and a quarter. A couple of pounds lighter. An enthusiastic group of Algerian students from colleges around Maine, Massachusetts, New England, some coming all the way from New York to support their countrymen. Makes his home in Paris. Less than a minute to go here on round one. An almost typical feeling out round here. Neither fighter getting too close, throwing too many punches. They get a good look at each other. Amani, so far, is moving strictly to his left, which is really the way to fight a southpaw, especially a southpaw uh, like Hagler. It's a punishing puncher. He keeps himself out of the range of that big straight left hand of Hagler's. Less than 30 seconds in round one, scheduled for 10. 20-foot ring here, eight-ounce gloves in use. 
They are both in superb condition. Final seconds of round number one at the Civic Center in Portland, Maine. Round number two. Number one ranked Marvin Hagler on the left of your screen in the Burgundy Trunks. On the right of your screen, Lucy Pamani from Igufaf, Algeria, now living in Paris, France. Growing up very near the same town that Marcel Serdam was raised in Algeria and says he feels some of the tradition in his bones of the late, great Marcel Serdam. He trained in a gym where Serdam trained and saw the posters. Good right hook by Hagler. And good right hook. Missed that one. Amani. Now as they start to mix a little more here in round number two, showing his good movement. Well, he's quick. He's quick. No question about that. Quick head movement, quick legs. He better be quick in there with Hagler. Marvin Hagler wins over Willie Warren, Mike Colbert, Kevin Finnegan, Benny Briscoe. And the draw that haunts him still against Vito Antifermo. Amani is slipping punches and he's not countering. Tim. Good, That's straight right. Hagler, he's hurt. Him. Amani is hurt. It really rocked him another right hand. He's got him in trouble. He's on the ropes and that's it. Amani knocked right through these very loose ropes into the press row. As Hagler with a good short straight right. That was a damaging punch. And Amani knocked right through these very loose ropes here. Took several tough shots as he was sagging on the ropes. And fell into the press row. And here in the second round, a startling knockout by Marvin Hagler. Let's watch it again. Amani receiving attention. He's apparently all right. That straight right jab hurt him. That's how powerful Hagler is. He hurt him with a jab. There's a right hook behind it. And here, here's those ropes, those loose ropes. That didn't help. We've been watching these ropes during the preliminaries today and have been critical of them. They were not anchored tightly enough. And here's an example of what can happen. There's no support from those ropes. He takes a left and a right. And he's practically out cold at that point. And through the ropes he goes. Now Lucie Famini being assisted back up toward the wing apron. Now they've decided to take him down and uh, we'll take him en route to the uh, dressing room and he is apparently all right. Getting some assistance from his handlers. The trainer is Julian Tiffanier and his manager Gerard Tiffanier. We'll return here to the Civic Center in Portland, Maine. Marvin Hagler, you said before the fight that you didn't know much about him. You weren't too concerned about that, although you did have respect for him. Were you surprised at how easily you took him out? Well, first of all, I'd like to say hi to my grandmother and my son down in New Jersey, and to all my friends and fans all over the world. I was surprised about the way how he come out. He was a good fighter. He used his jab real well. Uh, I thought that I would have to respect this guy. I knew it. I went in with a, a fight, not really taking this guy lightly, and it, it paid off for me. In the first round, it looked like he was slipping punch as well and that he might be hard to hit, but suddenly you got that jab in on him in round two. It was a good, sharp punch, and that seemed to be the one that started, uh, started him on his way out. We're going to see that second round again. Perhaps you can describe what happened in there for us. Okay, here it comes now. This is the beginning of round two. Uh, just reflecting back on round one, did you think he might be hard to hit the way he moved? Yeah, he moved very well. You could tell he was a good polished pro, but he's never been in there with one of the best, and I figured that I'm the best. Right here, I'm looking. He had a good right hand. He caught me with in the, the first round, so now I'm sucking. There was another right hand. I'm looking for that right hand. They know that order to fight a right hand, a southpaw, you have to shoot the right hand and a left hook, and this is what I'm looking for. I was slipping real well. My head was moving. My speed was good. He's a well-respected fighter, though. But I'm the best, and all I want is another shot of Vito Antifonio. That's all I want. Well, you're very much in line for it again, as you expected you would be. Let's uh, watch the, the finish here. Uh, these uh, ropes proved to be a bit of a factor. 
as uh, they're a little bit loose and when you got him on the ropes he went right through them but let's watch for that right hand that uh, started him on his way it looked like you were jabbing but you had good power on it should be coming up here shortly slipping very well here I'm moving everything looking for an opening that's what I'm looking for he was very covered up good he moved very well he's got to make a mistake and this is what I'm looking for I don't think he landed a solid punch to you during the course of the fight. Well, but what I wanted to show him was that he was in there with the champion. I should be champion today behind that controversy draw there, but I'm showing the world that I'm, I'm right back in there and I'm looking like a champion. That was a good solid right there. Now you got him in trouble. Good right hand there, and here he is on the ropes. A left and a right finished him, and... He went right into the press row. That's fortunately, fortunately, Lucif Amini was not injured in that fall. He's all right, but he was a definite knockout victim by the man who wants that championship again. Now you've won this fight. Where did, what is your understanding of where you stand in the title picture? What well, happens next for Marvin Hagler? Right now I'm leaving it up to my manager and trainer and attorney. Whoever they say I fight, I'll fight. I like to stay busy and stay right on top of my game, fight some of the best contenders that they have out there today. And just to stay sharp for Vito Antifomio, I want him again. Well, he's got to get by Alan Minner, of course. That's his uh, first uh, title defense after the one against you. And it may be that you'll have one or two more fights. Is that what you're saying before the title shot? That's right. I'm going to stay busy. Since I had an easy night tonight, I'm going right back in the gym and keep working. Okay, Marvin. Good luck to you. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back here.